Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to the central black hole of the Milky Way galaxy. The black hole whose image was captured by the iconic Event Horizon Telescope, and the black hole whose discovery led to the Nobel Prize just a few years ago. And in the last few months there's actually been a few discoveries about the black hole, but today we're going to focus on one of the major discoveries. The discovery coming from this study by Wang and Zhang that in essence discovers how our black hole was most likely formed and when it was formed by focusing on certain details that were previously ignored. And so in other words, the researchers behind this study potentially discovered the origin story of the Sagittarius A star, that's of course the name for this black hole, while also to some extent answering a few questions about the formations of massive black holes. Which is actually one of the major questions in modern cosmology, because scientists today are trying to understand how these giants formed billions of years ago and what exactly caused some of them to grow to enormous sizes, sometimes billions of solar masses in mass. But in order to try to start answering these questions, we obviously have to understand the central black hole of our own galaxy just a little bit better. And well, thanks to the observations from the Event Horizon Telescope, we can finally start making certain conclusions. Although I guess the thing is, even though this is the closest supermassive black hole to planet Earth, it's not particularly big compared to a lot of other black holes in other galaxies. Here the mass is just over 4 million solar masses, whereas the black hole in the middle of M87 galaxy is actually closer to 6 billion solar masses. And so there's definitely a tremendous difference. Here's actually a really intriguing visualization showing us this size comparison. But because Sagittarius A star is only 26,000 light years away from us, which is relatively close when it comes to black holes, it actually allows us to see a lot of additional details that would be invisible for any other black hole out there. For example, we can observe various emissions in the X-rays, infrared and radio wavelengths, which we know this black hole produces once in a while. For example, here's one of the recent X-ray detections showing us a sudden brightening in the X-rays. And a lot of previous studies that focused on the environment around this black hole actually discovered signs of previous emissions by observing various echoes coming from the gas around the black hole that was hundreds and thousands of light years away. And as a result today we know that every few hundred years there seems to be at least one major eruption. Possibly the result of some kind of a star approaching the black hole too close being disrupted in the process. But this process of shredding and destruction of stars, despite being relatively powerful, does not actually contribute enough mass to the black hole itself. And that's because the majority of mass ends up being ejected from the black hole or turned into energy. And interestingly, in one of the recent studies, researchers even discovered how a lot of this energy seems to be guided by something, resulting in these unusual formations scientists now refer to as chimneys, that eventually result in various exhaust vents where a lot of this energy is suddenly released all at once. But by observing the amount of energy released here, we can obviously calculate the amount of mass our black hole consumes every single year. And well, it's actually quite minuscule. As a matter of fact, if the black hole was consuming this much mass, it would not grow to these sizes even after a hundred billion years. And so even though we found structures like the Fermi bubbles you see right here, that suggest very powerful emissions, even if these emissions were happening every single year, the black hole would still not really be big enough. So it must have grown to its current size through some other means. And right now we only think there are possibly two means for black holes to grow, either accretion of matter over time, which as I just mentioned potentially doesn't actually add enough of mass, or a massive black hole collision. And this is of course where we don't really have any evidence. As a matter of fact, this even results in what's known as the final parsec problem. It's basically an astrophysical paradox where the scientists don't actually know how two supermassive black holes could possibly collide. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description, but as of today, there's almost a complete lack of evidence that supermassive black holes can collide and can thus grow larger. Yet we know supermassive black holes get really big. So how exactly do they do this? And it looks like we finally have our first piece of evidence from right here in the Milky Way. And the answer seems to be collisions after all. But how exactly do we know this and what exactly is this evidence? And turns out that all of this evidence 
was in these observations from the Event Horizon Telescope. And it's the evidence that shows us the spin of the black hole. Turns out Sagittarius A star is just a little bit unusual. It seems to spin really fast, but also in a little bit of a misaligned way compared to the rest of the galaxy. In other words, it doesn't actually spin on the same axis as the galactic disk itself. And this was enough evidence for the scientists behind this paper to start crunching numbers and to start producing models. With basically just one assumption, the assumption being that this misalignment was the result of a massive collision. And so following a bunch of models, they finally discovered one that seemed to fit the observations. Here this was a merger between two relatively massive black holes with a mass ratio of about 4 to 1. So essentially one of these black holes was about 4 times as massive. And the collision itself very likely happened with the inclination of about 145 to 180 degrees formed by the line of sight from planet Earth. And turns out that this collision basically replicates exactly what we observe here. And by having this inclination and basically by knowing how this smaller galaxy possibly orbited around the Milky Way, they now think they know exactly what happened and when. This is now believed to be the result of the Gaia Enceladus galaxy, the signs of which we've discovered around the Milky Way several years ago, that merged with the Milky Way approximately 9 billion years ago. And this seems to have been the last major merger in the Milky Way, adding a huge amount of mass to the galaxy, but also finalizing the mass of our black hole. And intriguingly, this collision very likely resulted in a star forming period that lasted for a few hundred million years, while also changing the shape of the disk of the Milky Way, making it much thicker, and also adding a few globular clusters, such as MGC 2808 you see right here. And so it was very likely the result of this merger that basically finalized the Milky Way's black hole, suggesting that the black hole itself kind of formed 9 billion years ago. And right now this is the best explanation we have for the unusual spin of Sagittarius A star. And naturally, if the study here is correct, it also provides us with very important evidence for how massive black holes most likely grow and how they reach these massive sizes. This is actually known as the hierarchical black hole merger theory, and you can learn a little bit more about it in one of the papers in the description. And though technically this is probably the most accepted theory, up to this point there was just a complete lack of evidence. But now we have some evidence from our own black hole, which provides us with some really important answers. And it technically even tells us how frequent these collisions are around the entire universe. In other words, by learning that 9 billion years ago, Sagittarius A star was formed as a result of a merger, we can now infer a merger rate, allowing us to potentially detect one of these events sometimes in the future. And so the conclusion from this paper is that we should be seeing at least one of these events sometimes in the near future, possibly within the next 10 years. But at least for now, this is still a pretty important discovery that helps us understand the evolution of our own galaxy and naturally provides us with more details for when the massive black hole in the Milky Way actually formed with the date being approximately 9 billion years ago. But I'm sure in the next few months we're going to discover even more details and learn so much more about Sagittarius A star and what's happening in its vicinity. And so if you'd like to learn more, make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Thank you for watching, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.